All right, welcome to a very special video-only edition of The Old Man of the Three with J.J. Redick and Tommy Alter. Tommy, this is instant reaction from Game 3 of the NBA Finals between the Lakers and the Heat. Tommy, what a game. What a game. Crazy. Crazy. All right, initial thoughts. Five minutes afterwards, what was the first thing you thought? All I kept thinking of was that moment at the end of Game 2 that went viral when the camera's on Jimmy... And he's kind of going, he's looking around. All right. All right. And look, a lot of guys do that. Not everybody backs that up. That was the best I've ever seen Jimmy Butler play. I was going to, so this is what I was going to say. You, Jimmy's like one of your brothers. You've been in action with him. You've been in, not in the finals, but you've been in similar high pressure moments with him. What does him locking in mean? And why is it? Why is he special, even in a league full of special guys and special players? I'll tell you what was special about tonight. Jimmy likes to ease his way into games from a scoring standpoint. He likes to get guys involved early. He likes to make the right play. He had one mode tonight, and it was attack. He was initiating contact. He was downhill. He was aggressive from the start. I mean, to see Jimmy have whatever he had, 19 in the first half or whatever it ended up being, like he doesn't always do that. You know, he, he picks and yeah. chooses in the first half, and then as, as the game matures and it gets to the third and the fourth quarter, he, he then, no, not tonight. Tonight was all about attacking from the start. Um, the other big part of the game tonight was Tyler Hero at the end of the third and then in the fourth quarter because up until then he couldn't buy a bucket and then scored four buckets uh, over the, the course of the end of the game, and that was huge. Irrational confidence, and I love it. Yeah. Well, the other shout-out I feel like we have to give on the Miami side is Kelly Olenek, who both in Game 2 and in Game 3. Did Kelly even play in the Boston series? I mean, he's he has not yeah. been a major part of the rotation in the playoffs so far, and he's definitely obviously has some playoff experience, but he's been huge at 17 tonight. Uh, he had three threes, and a, and a couple of them. He had a couple in the fourth. I mean, they were big threes. He did yeah. score all these in the first quarter. No, he was great tonight, and it was what it was like a quiet. I don't know how many rebounds he ended up with, but I know at one point I looked up and it was like, oh, Kelly Olynyk has seventeen and six. Um, yeah, he finished with seventeen and seven. Yeah, he was great tonight. Uh, but I, you know, w w we've talked a ton about Miami uh, on the podcast and on this channel, and and I don't want to beat a dead horse here. But the Miami that we've seen during this run and during the bubble has been heavy on ball movement, heavy, heavy on next pass, you know, good to great, heavy on, uh, you know, strong side defense. And I think that was the biggest adjustment tonight. Because even if you look at game two, their shooting percentages were like 50, 40, 90. They were great offensively. And so, yeah. that Tommy, that was the biggest adjustment I saw. They, they played less zone, and when Anthony Davis had the ball, they were sending two people. And the, 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 the X and O of this, I love this coverage. So Anthony Davis getting guarded by a smaller guy in the post. You drape him three-quarter. You send the ball over the top from the entry passer. As the ball's in the air going baseline, a second guy comes from the baseline side. That's where the double comes from. He wasn't ready for it tonight in the first half. He had back-to-back -back plays where he turned the ball over, then he got a charge on Jimmy Butler. That was a concerted effort by the Heat to kind of take him out of his game because he was the best player, you know, over those first, first two games. games. He was probably the MVP. Yeah. I know LeBron had a, had a great game in game two, but he was the difference maker. Have they? Has anyone that the Lakers have faced so far run something similar to this? Well, I think he's seen the coverage before. That's yeah. that's not necessarily what it was. I just – I, I like the physicality and the pressure – the urgency every time they sent that second guy. And that's ultimately what you're going to have to do, especially with Bam out. Um, you know, and, and look, I, you know, Myers Leonard gave him some good minutes early. Kelly was great tonight. Like, they're going to be undersized, but those guys, when they are in the game, like, they have to do a good job defensively, but they also have to stretch the floor and make it easier. And, and, uh, and, and they did that tonight. Give them credit. What did you see? What, are the, what did you A, see from the Lakers, and B, what do you think – their adjustment heading into game four is besides you know keep 
Jimmy off the line as much yeah. as they can. Well, they're gonna they're gonna have to first of all they're gonna have to figure out what to do with Jimmy Butler. I just did the numbers. He's at he's at twenty nine points a game, over ten assists a game, and seven rebounds a game through three three games. And he's shooting a an incredibly efficient percentage from the field. So they're gonna have to make an adjustment there. Um, we've talked about this a ton. When LeBron and AD are on their games and they get their role players to step up, they're practically unbeatable. AD off his game tonight. Got it going a little bit in the second half and ended up with 15. Uh, Danny Green, KCP, didn't knock down shots tonight. Rondo didn't have the same type of impact that he had in game two. Uh, I thought Morris was I, Morris was great. Yeah, tonight. I, I was yeah. going to say, Keefe and Kuz yeah. were the two guys off the bench that, that contributed a little. But I, I feel like in games one and two, it was like LeBron, AD, all world. And then the bench all stepped up. We didn't get that same impact tonight. Yeah. Let me ask you a, a dumb fan question about Jimmy in particular. Yeah. Because I was thinking this in the fourth quarter when Miami's offense was really breaking down and it sort of looked like they were about to crack for a minute at the six or seven mark. Jimmy is such a physical guy. He's such a linebacker with the ball. What exactly are you supposed to do defensively when he – is when he's coming like he is. I don't understand. I mean, they were throwing a bunch of different things at him, but if the guy is that physical and is embracing basically getting knocked on his ass every 10 seconds and then going to the line and hitting those free throws, how exactly besides keeping the ball out of his hands are you supposed to stop him from doing that? Yeah. So there's there's two things that he does really well. He's welcoming contact. I don't even think he always initiates the contact, but he's seeking out the contact. It's there for him, and he wants it. And then the second thing is, for the most part, his finishes are below the rim. So he takes those two big steps. And using those steps and seeking contact, that's how he creates the separation. So if it's a smaller player, you really don't have a chance, right? So ultimately, it's like he needs to be matched up against a guy who's as equally as physical and equally as, as has the same length. And, you know... There were multiple times where he's on a smaller player. He, you know, he spun on KCP. He, you know, he reached in, he fouled him. So, you know, you it's same same thing with Harden when he drives and he's he's initiating that contract contact and taking those two euro steps. Like you have to be big enough and long enough to absorb the contact and then not reach in. And there's not look, there's not many defenders in the world who can do that one on one. That's the tough part. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. That is an elite jacket. Where did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, Alpha Industries shout out to Alpha Industries jacket. They do a variety of bomber jackets. I got this pin, this this uh, whatever it's called, this patch um, from eBay, like four dollars, and I just slapped it on. I think I, I got it. this one too. I think I got, I think it's a black jacket, and I put the NASA on, and I put the. Uh, I definitely put this on. I forget whether I put this on. Yeah, you know bomber would, season, man. I know bomber season's dope. I've got a I've got a turkey in the wolf patch sitting at my house, and I cannot wait to slap that on one of my bomber jackets. I can't wait till we have old man and the three bomber jackets, which are coming <laughs> ASAP. I think that's going to be our first thing before t-shirts. <laughs> We're going to do masks. We're going to do masks and then bombers. I feel bomber like jacket the, season, baby. I, f- I feel like that's. Season. I feel like I feel like that's the next step. Look, that, so the so here's the thing. They're going to figure out how to get AD. I think you got to put AD on the. He's good enough. He's he's got every skill set in the world. You got to put him on the move if they're going to play defense on him that way. So that's an adjustment offensively. I think they're going to you're going to look for more like small to big pin downs for him to catch the ball at the top and operate there away from any double team. Um, I like the adjustment that Miami made playing less zone. So I think they'll continue to do that. And then and then you'll you'll just see the Lakers come up with a plan. Um, with Jimmy, but the problem is, look, he had he had whatever it was. It was thirteen assists tonight. You know, if you put two on the ball, it's just all shooters out there. When Bam's not yeah. in the game and it's Myers or Kelly, it's just all shooters. So it makes it really hard to put two on the ball against him. Well, it's all it's all shooters, and it's shooters that have not really shot well in the first three games. And just playing the numbers, they're going to have one they're where they where they're due it's just a, it, that's just it's going to happen at some point and so it's whether they can withstand that i agree i agree what, i think, not I think knowing, game four is going to be fascinating i really do i'm so excited not, about it not knowing obviously um the specifics or having talked to the guys or anything like that what you know about bam's injury and goron's injury do you think there's a world where either of them make it back I, I don't foresee Goran Dragic playing basketball again this season. 
with the planner. You just don't think it's possible. It's just not possible. And I've had that injury. I had a, I had a, my mind popped, uh, my senior year on my right foot. And it was a, it was a three week injury. Um, and I, and it's just a pain. Played. It's a pain. It's just a pain. Or you can, you can, you just yeah. not land on it. There's not a whole lot you can do. It's just, it's, it's, it's look, I, I also bruised my heel one year in the play in the playoffs and I had to get like injections in there. And that was, I, I, I mean, it's, there's possessions you couldn't move. And that wasn't even a, a torn plantar fascia. It was just a bruised heel. So I, yeah. I, I just don't, it's his, it's his wheel, man. I just don't foresee him playing. That's a, that's a, such a tough injury. And, and a lot of people have, have had plantar fasciitis, but when your plantar fascia actually tears, like that's, that's a re- there's a recovery process there. That's that's an actual acute injury as opposed to like chronic pain. That's something that you actually takes time for that injury to then heal, so that you can actually go play. Bam's thing, I have no idea. I mean, I have no idea. I, I, yeah. I can only speak. So know what Andrade. it is. Yeah. yeah. So um, all right. Well, game four is going to be great. Uh, you and I uh, have have dinner tomorrow together. You're you're in the city, so I'm I'm excited to see you. Um, yep. And we'll we'll have. Um, a podcast later for you guys this week. Uh, got a the, good, got a great, great. We're to, to be determined NBA All Star. Yes, we got a couple good ones coming up. We got an NBA All Star we're taping on Wednesday, and then we have one of the legends an, of the game. Absolute, absolute yeah. legend. Yeah, maybe the biggest and best guest we've had on so far. Yeah, we're taping this week, and it's going to air in a week or two. Uh, yeah. We're going to hold it, and we're not going to say who it is. We'll see if you guys can guess, but definitely follow. Uh, follow our socials and everything because we're going to be teasing it a little bit as we as we lead into the uh as we lead into the next couple weeks all right leave your comments below we'll talk to you guys soon tommy i'll see you tomorrow later all right